and the panels are replaced. Armourers are also responsible for the varied recognition cartridges in the coded colours of the day. Finally, self-adhesive fabric patches are stuck over the gun ports to prevent mud entering on takeoff from grass airfields and to keep the guns from freezing at altitude. The bulletproof windscreen and the reflector sight are polished and checked. A fighter pilot had to be a first-class shot, but first he had to judge the range of the enemy. The reflector gun sight was designed to help him do so. For when an aircraft the size of an ME-109 filled the ring, it was 100 yards away. When it appeared equal to half the diameter, it was 200 yards away. Knowing the sizes of the other German types, the pilot could quickly judge their ranges. He estimated the span of the target and turned a knurled wheel to that setting. He then adjusted a second knob to the estimated range. This varied the gap between the two lines in the sight, and when the target filled the gap, it was at the optimum range. Although the bullets left the guns at over twice the speed of sound, this velocity rapidly dropped off. And because the guns vibrated a little as they fired, the bullets spread out into a cone-shaped pattern. The eight-gun Spitfire would fire about 480 rounds in a typical three-second burst. But at 400 yards, the density of hits would be no more than seven or eight per square foot. As well as slowing down and spreading out with range, Bullets drop due to gravity, over five feet at 400 yards. So the armourers carefully adjusted the guns and the reflector sight so that they harmonised and the cones of fire would converge, usually about 250 yards ahead. Careful pilots checked their work. An enemy fighter flying at 300 miles an hour travelled 36 yards in the quarter of a second it took for the 303 bullets to reach it. In a beam attack, the pilot would have to aim 36 yards in front of the target to hit him. But more usually, the angle between the two aircraft was much less than 90 degrees, and the ability to make the instinctive judgment of this angle and this target speed was one of the main factors separating the aces from the others. Ender's practice with charts like this familiarised inexperienced pilots with the appearance of German aircraft at different angles and from all likely attacking positions. The Spitfire pilot manoeuvred his aircraft so that targets 20 degrees off just touched the ring and were pointing towards the dot on which the guns were directed. Targets 10 degrees off were placed halfway between the ring and dot. At 5 degrees off, they should be even nearer the dot centre. The Messerschmitt in this diagram is correctly positioned in the ring. But this shot will miss. By 1942, the much-improved gyro gun sight was introduced. It retained the familiar ring and dot as a standby, but had a second ring of six diamond-shaped dots projected on the screen beside it. The diameter of this ring was controllable by the pilot, who twisted the throttle grip until this pattern just circled the span of the target. The sight automatically computed the range and deflection of the enemy, even in a tight turn. By mid-1941, having secured air superiority at home, Aria Fighter Command was able to go on to the offensive.